Hi, this is Gail with Beta Jewelry Diva, and today we are going to learn some wire weaving techniques. Now we're going to learn these patterns today, so I'm going to teach you how to do them. But first you may be wondering, what's the difference between wire weaving and wire wrapping? Well, the way that I kind of determine the difference is, I think of this as being wire wrapping. So I'm taking one or two wires and I'm not doing any coiling or anything like that, but I'm just wrapping it around some other object. So I would call this a wire wrapping. I would consider this a wire weaving because I'm taking two or more base wires, which are generally oh, usually 16 or 18 or 20 gauge. And then I'm taking a smaller gauge of wire and I'm wrapping it around the bigger one in a set pattern. So you've got coiling around in various uh, configurations. So this is a wire weaving versus wire wrapping. All right, I'm also going to talk to you about some you know, helpful hints and then I will show you some applications on how you can use your wire weaving. So we'll talk about different uh, projects and everything. Today we're only going to use two base wires. I will have other videos that have more than two base wires, like three or four. That'll be different. This one is just going to be the very beginning. You're going to learn how to do it on two base wires. And uh, before I get started, I just want to say, if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel, I hope you'll do so. Let's go ahead and get started. For my base wires, I'm going to be using some 16 gauge copper wires. For my weaving wires, I'm going to be using a turquoise 26 gauge um, enameled copper wire. And the reason I'm using a colored wire is so you can see um, the wrapping a little bit better. You'll also want to have like a chain nose or flat nose pliers and you'll see what we use these for. The first weave we're going to learn is going to be the basket weave. So I've got my two base wires and I've got my 26 gauge wire. I'm going to leave myself about a three inch tail and working towards one end of the, the base wire, I'm going to take my wire over my 26 gauge over my base and I'm going to wrap it about three times. And this is useful for just securing your wire you're going to go ahead and hold on to this tail. So you'll just hold on to it like that. So otherwise the tail is just going to spin around on you. So we've got our 26 gauge wire wrapped around three times. I'm going to take my other base wire and I'm going to put it under the turquoise wire. So you see it's under. Now I've got them just a little bit apart. Hold down your tail. You see my 26 gauge wire is coming over the other base wire and I'm going to wrap to the back and I'm going to make sure that these two wires are apart. I'm going to come through the two wires. So you see I've really just made a coil around the second wire. I'm going to come back. Then I'm going to take my 26 gauge through the two 16 gauges and over the top. So what I've done is I've made two coils on the lower um, the lower base wire and I'm coming back over the upper. So now I'm going to come through the two middle wires and I'm going to wrap around once. So you can see I've got two coils up on top. Come through the two wires. So this is kind of an over over I guess you want to call it. So I'm coming through. I'm over the second base wire and I'm going to wrap twice. So again we've got two little coils here. A little bit faster, I'm coming through, over, around, through, over, around, through, and then I'll call this an across, then over and around, 
through and cross. And there we go. Now you may be wondering why it's called a basket weave because that doesn't look a whole lot like a basket weave. But when you put your wires further apart, your base wires further apart, it becomes more apparent how it got its name. So what I've done is I've just gone ahead and made my three coils up here. I'm going to use this as my tail. And I'm going to just do the same thing that I have been doing. So it's between the two wires, over, coil twice, between the two, over, coil twice. So it's the same thing that we've been doing. It's just your wires are further apart. And I'm going to do this a couple more times real quick. Now you can see that they, they're all really far apart, so I'm going to compress. And it's a lot more apparent how it got its name, Basket Weave. Now the one thing that you have to worry about, of course, is keeping your distance pretty um, even between the two wires. That's going to come with practice. All right, so let's go ahead and see some examples of some basket weave. And this is done in copper, so I've got, I think, actually an 18 gauge as my base wire. And then I'm still using 26 gauge as my um, weaving wire. So you can see this section is just, you know, close together like this. And then you can see that I've gotten wider in this section. So you can see what the basket weave looks like a little bit better. And then over here, I've got the same basket weave, but you can see that it's really a bunch farther apart and far more open. And the way that I got this is instead of coiling around twice around each one of the base wires, I believe I co coiled around like five times. So you don't have to coil around just two times or whatever. You can coil around a bunch of times. So this is the basket weave. Let's go ahead and go on to our next weave. This next one is very similar to the basket weave, but it's just a little different in the way it's constructed. I believe this is called a modified soutache or something along those lines, but um, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it goes by other names as well. So what I've got this time is I'm actually having my tail end point up this time. And I'm going to wrap around three times, same as usual, just securing. So I've got my working wire coming over. I'm going to scooch this down. Working wire is coming over. I'm going to grab my second wire. And I'm going to put these pretty close together. So with the basket weave, it you need, kind of need to have your wires further apart in order to see the weave. It's not quite the same thing with, with this one. One thing that you do want is you want to be able to see that where you're putting your, your wires through. Sometimes it's easy to um, mistake one wire for the other. They get crossed or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently bend the ends up a little bit so I have a, a good space in order to put my wire through. All right, so I've got my coils. I'm coming down over the bottom wire. I'm going to wrap around twice. So far, looks just the same. But this time, instead of coming up through the wires, I'm going to just wrap around the back. Now I'm going to take my wire and once again, wrap twice around the top, wrap down across the bottom wire, coil once through, and then wrap it to the back. Again, over the top, wrap twice, down across the bottom wire, coil the bottom wire and wrap to the back. I'm going to compress this a little bit and you can see that we've got one long wire on each side. So they pretty much do look the same 
on each side in copper with a little bit longer of a section. So let's see. You can see that it pretty much looks the same front and back. And this is a nice weave to I, for general weaving. I like using this one, even if I'm just using two wires. Now, you know, in later videos, you're going to see what it looks like to wrap with three wires, four wire, wires, etc. But I'm just showing you two wires in this book. I don't know the name of this next weave, but I do believe it's a really pretty one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by my short piece of wire. So this is my tail end, and I'm going to take one of my base wires and wrap around six times, I think. One, two three, four, five, six. And the reason I'm wrapping around six times is I'm going to have one for my tail, so to speak. And then five of these are going to be my, what I call my pattern um, coils. So I've got my first set of coils in place. Now I'm going to put these um, base wires rather close together. Oops, let's see if yep. we can get this in focus. Okay, I've got them rather close together and now they're going over both wires. I'm going to wrap over both wires three times. One, two, three. So I've got it looking like this. Okay, so you can see that it's around all for both wires and I'm going to come up behind and I'm going to wrap five times. So one, two, three, four, and five. So I've got five wraps around. Now I'm going to go ahead and compress these. So you can see this is what it looks like now. I'm going to go over both wires again and wrap both wires three times. Then I'm going to wrap the top coil five times. Two, three, four, five. Compress. And I'll do it one more time a little and bit. And let me show you an example in all copper. Let's see if I can get this up closer for you. So you can see, and I'll turn it this way since that's the way I've been coiling it. So you can see I've got the top wires and then I've got the three that go around both. So you've got a little bit of a bare wire in here which actually just gives it a kind of a neat look, I think. So it's a little different. Instead of having everything coiled, you've got some bare space showing. So that's this one. Now let's go on to our last weave. For the last weave that I'm going to download before I do helpful hints and everything, um, again, I've got my tail, my um, tail end going away from me. I'm going to wrap around, oh, five times. So. One, two, three, four, five. And I've got my sixth wrap as my little tail wrap. So I've got my five wraps. I'm going to bring in my second wire. And I'm going to wrap over both wires three times. So, so far this is exactly like the last weave that we talked about. Now here comes the difference. What I'm going to do now, and I want to make sure that these are a little bit apart. There we go. What I'm going to do now is wrap around the bottom instead of going back up to the top. So I'm going to wrap it around the bottom five times. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's what it looks like. Then I'm going to go 
behind and wrap three times. So one, two, three. So I've got three wraps there. Now I'm going to go five times around the top. So one, two, Let's see if I can get these a little bit better apart. Three, four, five. So I'm going to compress this. So this is what it looks like so far. And what's kind of interesting is you can see that these are leaning in like that. Okay, I'm going to go again. So this time, what am I going to do? That's right, I'm going to do three across both wires. So one, two, three. Then I'm going to do five across the bottom. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to compress again. And if you'll notice, and I don't know if I have enough to do another one, but again, these are going to go inward. So you can see you're going to get a V where it goes down this way and up this way. So you get little V's on both ends of your wire. So you've got some wire showing through and then some wire that's coiled. Now let's see if I can find my example of this one. And here we go. There's the, let's see if we can get it closer for you. You can see where I've got my V's going up and my V's going down. Now, this is the way it looks on the front. On the back, it looks slightly different because I have four on this side and two on this side. And if you like this pattern better, the four and two, go ahead and use this as your front. I just happen to like using a, a uniform number of wires for my front. Helpful hint number one. If you're having problems holding on to these wires or keeping them straight or anything, here's something useful. Go ahead, get your wires about as far apart as you think you need them. Then take your blue painter's tape and go ahead and put it around the wires. The next suggestion I have is if your hands or fingers, you're, you're finding that it's getting really rough in one spot or it's starting to hurt a little bit by you know, wrapping your um, wire around, take some of this self-sticking bandage tape and I've cut off a little strip and I will just wrap it around my fingers at any spot that I think I need it. And this gives me a little bit of a cushion so I can go ahead and it's not going to hurt. The wire's not going to dig into my fingers. Another idea for you, go ahead and do like a three inch piece of weaving, just kind of like what I've done here with the different uh, patterns and, and even different gauges of the same pattern. For example, these two are the same pattern, but you can see by using different gauge of base wires and weaving wires, it ends up looking very different. So you can take all these things, you can, you know, create your own little way of putting them together, like putting them on some sort of uh, paper clip or make some sort of little wire keeper for you, for yourself. And then just use these, and when you're trying to figure out what weave to use for any particular project. Now, I happen to be using like four weaving wires for this one, but this is one piece of wire and I just bent it around. But while I'm on this piece, you can see for that for the bale, I used two wires and I use, let's see, I use this weave. I just did it with, I think, 28 gauge wire for my weaving wire and I believe I used 22 gauge for my base wire. But there's one application, so you can use it for a bale. Another idea for this necklace I made is I used two wires here, so you can see I used the basket weave wire. 
and I used it, um, you know, I started smaller and then went larger. And then I just added some beads to it. Um, another area that I had just two wires or is right in through here. And down here I used just two wires. So you can see that there are multiple different applications for, you know, using in different projects. You don't always have to worry about having three or four or whatever. Sometimes two um, wires wrapped is just what you need. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, learning how to make the different various wire weaves using two base wires. I will have some more videos using three base wires, four base wires, etc., etc. And uh, I hope you stay tuned and look for that. Uh, meanwhile, this is Gail saying, have yourself a wonderful day and keep on weaving. Bye.